geared up and ready to go. Hilma is mounted on Sarah. As today, she searches for sugar, a necessary component to make a great number of things. And it may very well lead us to the advent of electricity. But for that, of course, we must find the remnants of fruits here in autumn. So let's cross our fingers that we can get lucky and find the treasure we seek. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here and welcome back to Cataclysm in the Wood. We are here with Hilma Baron, and we are prepared to head out on a bit of an odyssey. Having a look at our map here, you'll notice, of course, it does look different. I have gone back to using the traditional Dead People texture pack for the overmap because most of the stuff is there. Sure, we're not going to have anything for these notations, but that's fine. We are going to have the other structures that are on the map uh, a little bit more clearly visible. Stuff like the the Scout Tower, for example. But today, we are gonna be making our way over towards the Raspberry Shrubs here. I don't think there's gonna be anything available for us there, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to find some apple trees that might still have apples on the go. We'll be lucky if we see anything, I think. Oh, and our young ones down there, they still haven't grown up yet. So we're gonna keep our eye on them as we come to and throw. And I'm just going to be checking trees as we're kind of riding around here. For the most part, it's all going to be acorns. And, well, not just acorns, but different kinds of nuts and all that jazz. Hickory too. And yes, we do have our taps that were placed on the maple trees. But they're not going to really help us out until later in winter. So... I'm going to keep my eyes peeled. We're going to go over towards where the raspberry shrubs are and see if we can get lucky. Yeah, nothing we can do with those raspberry shrubs. Nothing at all. And you know what? I don't think we're going to need to worry about it as well. Because I just double checked and we can use just straight up dehydrated fruit. Which makes sense. The sugars are still going to be in there. Dehydrating them just removes the water. So we shouldn't have any trouble actually getting some sugar. Yeah, I know. Well, this was a nice little ride about, wasn't it? And, you know, Sarah got some time outside of uh, the cave. So good for you. But we're going to be heading back for now. And we're going to be working on trying to get some of that sugar. Oh, and I do believe there were actually options for us when it came to the different types of acid. There were other recipes that we could undertake. So we don't necessarily have to do the one that's going to involve us getting a whole bloody welder set up. <laughs> yeah, if only I looked with the pantry door open. We got 230 dehydrated fruit there. We've also got honeydew as well. What we need now is lye powder, which actually might be a little bit more difficult than I thought, because for us to get lye powder, we do need to have lye, first of all. And for us to have lye, we need to have washing soda and slaked lime. Slaked lime requires us to have quick lime. And quick lime we can make. We just need to go and fuel up our forge. We've got a lot of limestone, so that's not gonna be an issue. The other one was the soda, which, oh boy, Hmm, yeah, it's washing soda. We do not have access to that. So then, let's think about other options. This is one way to make sugar. There are multiple ways for us to make it. Obviously, the maple syrup, that would be fantastic. And, well, we're not going to be able to go the candy option with the food processor. But we might be able to make sweet water still, and then distill sugar down from that. And indeed, we can make sweet water. We just need honeydew. And the honeydew, of course, we get from the aphids. So as long as we kind of leave some of them out there wild, we should be able to harvest it on a kind of semi-regular basis. This is going to give us, what, two things of sweet water as to how much sugar we get out of that. I guess we'll see. We'll pour that for now just into a glass bottle. Oh, and I've just noticed that some new things have been added in. Under electronics, we've got... Aha, some variations on batteries, I see. Medium dry battery, a light dry battery, and a heavy dry battery. Aha, aha, useful. And an other over here, platinum. A different way for us to make platinum, and that's from, yeah, 
the native chunks of copper. We've already got a fair amount, and I guess the funny thing here is you do get copper as the byproduct, but I believe the recipe to just make copper gives the platinum as a byproduct. So maybe this way you get more platinum than you do copper. Not sure, but always good to have options. All right, but let's not get distracted. We can now make some sugar, and this is gonna give us 20 sugar. Okay, it's a start, isn't it? There we go, sugar. Now, I know that that was needed as part of the battery making process, and looking at the differences in the recipe here, I think the main difference is that you have a heavy shell. And what happens, I imagine, when you use up a battery, you can probably deconstruct it and get a battery shell back, I think. So that means that making them in the future won't take as long because you've already shaped those chunks of steel into the battery shell. We can't straight up make a battery shell, so I imagine that that is just part of it once it's constructed. I am making lots of assumptions here, but that's what I'm going with for now. And so the sugar was needed for the carbon rod, yeah? Indeed it was, and we don't actually need that much. All we need now is some charcoal, and this is gonna give us one rod. How much did we need for the battery? We just need one rod. Okay, not a bad start then. So let's go make sure that we secure some charcoal. I'm surprised, I guess most of it must just be put in here and here. Let's go investigate. Yeah, so we've still got 5,000 of it out here, so we'll go and pick some of that up. And well, that's going to be 700. I feel like just 700 will do, which we'll just leave in the bookcase. And now we can make a carbon electrode rod. It is a carbon electrode, basically made from wood and sugar, and it actually works. Fantastic. Okay, so let's uh, create this thing using our mad science that we have. Okay. <laughs> We got a carbon electrode rod just on the table in front of us. That is one step closer. Next is zinc and the electrolyte paste. And the zinc, we can make just like so. Now for that, we we do need six of them. So that's gonna take pretty much the entire day and some. So we'll see you after we've got all of that done. And we wake up bursting with energy. Unfortunately, our practical skill with electronics has dropped down. I'm hoping we'll be able to improve that. We're gonna finish off this load of zinc before we start to move on to anything else. But before that comes breakfast. And there we go. The zinc is done. Oh. <laughs> we needed six zinc. We didn't need 1200 zinc. Oh boy. Well, we won't have to do that again for a long, long while, I think. <clears throat> so now, all that we require is our acidic electrolyte paste, zinc powder, manganese dioxide, and hydrochloric acid. Now, I think it was the acid that threw me. Yeah, there is more than one option for us here. So, of course, we did have this one, but then there's also this one down here, which we can make, and it just requires salt. And for salt, we just need salt water. We do have some rock salt lying around as well, so I'll just make sure that we can't actually create any other salt, or alternatively, we could already have salt, we just didn't have the pantry door open, <laughs> which indeed was the case. <laughs> this is why we check, Rikon. This is why we check. Now, how much of this did we need? Let's see. We only need one. Okay, well, let's make our one thing of hydrochloric acid. We'll use the clean water that is nearby and we'll pour that into one of the glass bottles. I feel like that, yet again, is better than putting it in a stomach. Although some of you did make some good calls to say that, you know, stomachs do contain acid mostly, so maybe it's okay. I mean, Hilma does do a good job of treating hers. But now all we need is the zinc powder and the manganese dioxide. Obviously, as you might imagine, we already have a lot of zinc. Surely this should be okay. Yeah, so 200 zinc is gonna give us 2000 zinc powder, which is more than enough. Okay, let's get this thing going. A very, very quick craft to do that. Now, the 262 manganese dioxide. Oh, which we get from rhodonite. And we only need to do this once. It looks like we're just like chiseling it. I guess that makes sense, chiseling some of it off and then just hammering it into a powder. 
Okay, let's do what we need to do. And just like that, we're done. Finally, we can make this funky paste, this acidic electrolyte paste. And this is going to give us a thousand of the stuff. That should be enough, right? I can, I can hope. So, let's head into battery now. We can make one. We can make one. We only need 166 of the paste, only 6 of the 1000 zinc, and only 5 pieces of duct tape out of our 140 pieces. So we can make a battery. And this battery will have a charge starting off. Because that's the thing. It's not a rechargeable battery. Oh, and look at that. Yeah, disassembly does give us a light battery shell. So making this in the future, instead of taking an hour and 13 minutes, it'll only take us 24 minutes. So it does save quite a bit of time. And it means we are going to be reusing parts of the battery. My question is, what are we going to put this battery in? I feel like it's got to be the soldering iron, right? Because that would lead us towards making more of this stuff. I mean, realistically, what's stopping us from making more than one battery? At this stage, the electro rod, but we can make more of them as well. For now, let's just go and make our one. <laughs> We've done it. We have actually done it. We have electricity now from this light, dry battery. I was just curious what we would need for solder. We just need rosin, which we can actually craft with a pine bough. Okay, let's do that so that we can get some solder, so that if we can make more things with the soldering iron, well, no, I haven't put the battery in the soldering iron yet, but let's, um, oh, you know what? Let's make a little bit more than just the one because it, we do save a bit of time. Oh, that's a, only a 10 units. Screw it, we'll just do the one for now. Okay, and we'll need a munch, so we're gonna go and have some of our smoked meat, which is gonna be going off soon, so it's one of the main reasons why I am chomping down on it. So now we've got solder. We have a soldering iron, which I'm going to reload. We reload the soldering iron with the light dry battery. We've got solder, we've got a soldering iron. I honestly think the next thing that I would want to try and get into is a arc welder. For this, we don't actually need the soldering iron. We just need power converters, which is going to require the soldering iron some extra solder on the side, and some makeshift transformers. So I think focusing on the makeshift transformers first is probably going to be the best thing that we can do. So we'll go and make two of those right now. There are our transformers. Okay, and let's make some solder. Right, now we can make a power converter. I'm pretty sure we did need two of these. We'll start off with just trying to make the one and see if we are successful. We mess up. That's okay, we have more solder. And there we go. And that got our theoretical understanding of electronics to three. Okay, that might open the door for us. And indeed it, it does. A crude heating element, an electrolysis kit. Okay, let's have a look at the new things. <sighs> wind turbine. <laughs> a small turbine that can convert wind into electric power. We need a bicycle alternator. Probably it's going to be the small electric motor, but that's going to be difficult. I can see it up ahead. Tool battery mount, tiny electric motor, small electric motor. I think the electronic scraps will be the one that's probably harder for us to come by. But never say never. We've got a micro motor, medium battery mod, light battery mod, a hot plate. A freaking hot plate, heavy battery mod, food processor, electronic control unit, electric lantern, coffee maker, clay car battery. That, that I think is going to be what we're going to use to power our home eventually. Let me have a proper look at this thing. Yeah, so it is just scrap metal, sulfuric acid, lumps of clay. We could totally make that thing. That is very good. That is very, very, very good. So we're starting to see a pathway in our mind to how we do these things. I believe an electrolysis kit will help us. Useful for crafting. Load with a storage battery or a vehicle battery to use. Okay, so it, it does require a bit of power. That will speed things up for us in the future. Right now, we don't have to worry about that, but <laughs> it's good. And in other, we have the concrete mixer, heavy duty cable, and outdoor extension cord. Okay, but let's reel it back in here. The next thing that we were going to look at making is a welder. Oh, and we need four 
power converters for us to do that. So I'm going to see everything we're going to need to make those final three. Six amplifier circuits and six makeshift transformers. Let's try and start with the transformers. Okay, we have enough of everything right now to make those six. So let's get that started. We are using a lot of charcoal, I will tell you. <laughs> so that's something that I'm going to have to consider. We are most certainly going to have to be sure that we are staying on top of the amount of charcoal we've got coming in. And it's already out of charges again. That was another 400. Okay, I'm going to have to go and bring in the big lot of charcoal from outside. But we've got 5,000 here still. We can pick up around about 751 each time. We'll get that reloaded. And there we go. That's our transformers done. Oh, it, I misread it. It was makeshift transformers or amplifier circuits. Okay, we've got everything we need to make these power converters. I don't want us to mess this up. Our electronics dropped down again somehow, but I think it will be okay. And indeed we are. The sun has set at this stage. We are not going to go to sleep yet because we are on a roll. We're going to eat some smoked meat. We're going to pop on over here. We're going to drink this clean water. Feel kind of satisfied after that. And then we're going to have a look at this welder and see exactly how long it's actually going to take to make it. Oh, now we don't have enough copper wire. Okay. Hmm. Well, we, we can make more. We get six lots of copper wire as we're doing this. So let's get 60 when we actually need it. Okay, just five more. I don't think there's any point in us doing this in like larger batches as well. We'll do it as it's needed. Otherwise, I think you can kind of get away on yourself and you might have stuff just sitting there you, that you don't actually need. But that, that'll do it. Makeshift arc welder. Obviously, we can't use this unless we have some kind of eye protection. So that's something that we're going to have to have a look in as well. So makeshift arc welder. Let's have a look. We're not tired yet, but we have finished it. And now, now we're tired. <laughs> and that's fair. We have made a makeshift arc welder. This crude arc welder has been fashioned from a few small transformers, some wire, an improvised electrode holder, and complete disregard for personal safety. While it's not as efficient as a factory welder, it will serve in a pinch. And I'm sure it will. This thing obviously does need to have a charge of some kind. It is charged by a medium battery. So that's the next thing that we're going to need to try and make to make that thing work. We can see that we did use some charge from our soldering iron. And obviously for us to use the makeshift arc welder, we will need uh, welding goggles of some kind. And for that, well, it <laughs> it does require some stuff. Ooh, tinted glass, three pairs of tinted glass. And we do need to have a pair of glass goggles or something like that. We can make a pair of glass goggles, so that's good. And we can make tinted glass as well. So we, we can make those. We don't have to make them just yet though. Honestly, it's not gonna take us all that long to do it. And, and really, having the glass goggles in general, I think will be good for us to have, even before turning them into welding goggles. It's just, uh, it, I'll be honest, it's overwhelming, the amount of things that we have access to now. It's, uh, it's a lot. For now, we're going to go to sleep. We'll check on the young ones when we wake up. Hilma, you have made leaps and bounds in this, your second year. It's time to sleep, though. All right. Let's get this day started. So, thinking about batteries once again, looking at a medium battery, we actually are close to having everything we need. The carbon electrode rods, sure, there, <laughs> there is a bit of work to do there, but the chunks of steel, we can get that. We've got lumps of steel, and of course those become chunks. I believe we should still have some lumps. <laughs> Strange wording, isn't it, really? Um, let's have a look and see if that is the case. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. And so we get four chunks from kind of chopping up each of these. We're going to chop up two, which is going to take two hours of work. And surprisingly enough, we're actually still fresh afterwards. So, hey, that's something. Oh, <laughs> of course, we needed one more. Oh, dear. So for the carbon electrode rod, we can, we, we can make these as well. Okay. That's our four of those. That's everything that we need to make this medium dry battery. And and there it is. That's going to have 500 charge to it. Okay. All right. Let's make it. Bam. Battery done. So let's go and reload the arc welder with that. 
that's everything we need for that now. Next up, glass goggles. Two hours and 27 minutes. Okay, I think this will take most of the rest of the day to make these welding goggles, I think. And the goggles are done. Good. Okay, more food please. And a drink too. And now, we want the tinted glass, but we'll check how much we need. Okay, three pairs of tinted glass. Ah, okay. And that's where we start to run out. We need scrap metal. Okay, and we know how we can get scrap metal. We cut up the chunks of steel, which we've still got some here. Chunks of steel, that's gonna be five scrap metal. Let's just cut them all up for now. 15 scrap, okay. And now we can do our glass. Bam, done. I am loving the speed at which we are advancing now. Welding goggles. Yup, an hour and 50 minutes for us to do it. And there is a chance we can fail this. It is plastic working that we're doing here, but this will do it. Okay, there we go. And that got a mechanic skill up to three. Was it on three before? Quick way for us to find out. It probably was because we didn't get anything new there, but that's, that's all right. I can now happily tell you that we have a welder that we can actually use which means that we're going to be able to make all kinds of wonderful things. And the first thing that comes to my mind was that wind turbine. Yeah, so obviously a lot of work would go into making something like this, but this could give us electricity that will keep on coming, which obviously is very good. So the pipes, the small metal sheets, they should all be doable. The small metal sheets we just get from cutting up a metal sheet. I think we might only have one at this stage, but we can make a sheet of metal, which yes, it does say that we have one of. Oh, it's a long time to do it. We wanna make sure that we keep at least one of them around. It's a necessary part of creating glass. So we can't get rid of that one yet. The same thing with the pipes. We need to make sure that we have at least one pipe to be able to blow glass. So perhaps tomorrow we'll have a look at making that. Oh, and here's something else that I would absolutely love to make. <laughs> a steam engine. There's a lot that goes into this though. Mechanical pumps, all kinds of things. Believe it or not, the small electric motor, we can make that now. We just need makeshift transformers. Yet again, I was not seeing the ore. <laughs> Yeah, and the wind turbine uses a small electric motor. Okay, so the limiting factor here is steel and also copper wire. So first of all, we can deal with the copper wire side of things. Ooh, I say that, but we will actually need more duct tape first. And duct tape comes in batches. So we'll spend our time, we'll make our duct tape. Oh, and the sun has set now. We're not gonna go to sleep until we actually get tired. Okay, so we can nearly get what we need out of this. Actually, we, we can. What we do is we make these three first, and then we go and recharge the forge. Bam, okay, that's that. And if we go back into it, ah, <laughs> we, we still don't have enough. So we are going to need some more steel. And we've been pretty lucky with steel so far, finding it down below in our mine. And so I think tomorrow we will check on the little ones, see how they're doing, and then we'll do some mining. For now though, Hilma, you have a very well-deserved sleep ahead of you. And there we are, feeling fantastic. Let's get our day underway. And I'm gonna try and keep us a little bit more lightweight today. So we're gonna take our back holsters off, along with the spear strap, and we're not gonna need that helmet either. There we are. We'll probably keep the balaclava on though. And with pickaxe in hand, let's head down here past Lien. There you are. And we'll keep on working our way through all of this. Okay, what do we get there? Native silver, I'll take it. And now we're gonna start mining to the left. Just limestone and rocks of limestone, still useful. We are in minimal pain though, and I'm not quite sure where the pain is originating from. I'll keep my eye on that. Oh, and some coal in here. And some more limestone too. Just pop up for a quick little lunch break and then we'll continue on. Oh, and one of the reasons why I haven't gone to check on the others outside yet is I'm Pretty confident that they haven't grown up yet because Lien should grow up before the others do. Okay, that looks like something. Aluminium. I think any ore at this stage is gonna be good for us. Starting to get wary now. And just some more limestone. Ah, yep, okay. Extremely wary, and that's where we're gonna stop. Okay, so I just need to sort out our rock. I think it's probably still worth just bringing all of it upstairs and then we can kind of just 
sorted out up here. Are you kidding me? We've got lie powder over here. 400 of the stuff. It's just in one of our rock piles. Okay. <laughs> hmm. We're going to make sure that we uh, store that all properly. Now, I think at this point, when we're extremely weary, the best thing that we can probably do is just lie down for a bit, see if we can get some energy back. Okay, yeah, and, and pretty quick. Oh, we, uh, we actually just fell straight asleep. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I guess we'll just... Uh, the sun's out. Day 12 of Auden. I didn't check to see when it was when we went to sleep, but we're going to keep on working down there. Okay. Got through two lots there. Just got some more coal. I think we'll just go have a quick sit down. Now that we're at moderate, I'm just trying to take it a little bit easier. Oh, and it's night out, so yeah, may maybe not. Maybe we just kind of work the whole way through. But now we're going to start mining down. And the idea with this mine is to just kind of try and have it snake around. And very wary, that's probably the last of what we can do. So I'll collect what's going to be useful and bring it upstairs. Okay, we're back up and no idea what time of day it is. It's not day, we know that much. Oh, okay, what's that? Native copper, better than nothing. And I think there was some rock salt there as well, yeah. Oh, and that's our progress today. Can we get it done? Just, okay, all right. Hold it back up, Hilma. And look at that, the light's out. And that's the end of this passageway. Nothing yet so far, we start to go down. Okay, Galena. So that's gonna be lead and some aluminium. Yet again, extremely wary. Didn't get that far at all today, but we'll take it back up. Still no steel, unfortunately. You know what? I think tomorrow we are gonna go outside because we haven't checked on our crops in a while. Probably worth us seeing how they are going. Okay, well we've woken up and the light is out. So that's a little bit of a bonus for us. Nothing's uh, grown up down below. I don't think anything is harvestable yet either. This is a little bit further along. The cattail has matured, strawberries have matured. Okay, so there's a fair bit of maturation there, but it's not not quite ready. We are on day 14 of autumn though, so the <laughs> winter is just around the corner. Oh, and it's actually morning at the moment, so we did wake up at a good time. Well, nothing else to it but getting back to work. And this is definitely the last bit of work that we're doing today. Uh, that's taken way too long. But we started it, and it doesn't look like there was anything out of that either. Yep, just two pieces of nitre after all of that. Honestly, part of me is thinking it might be more beneficial for us to just roam and see if we can find another cave. Because, as we know, caves are a massive resource for when it comes to these kinds of resources. The question is, where might we find a cave? Well, we know that they're situated pretty much towards the edge of forests. We can see them kind of spattered around the map. We really haven't had too much of a look on the left-hand side of this field, so it might be worth us taking Gale out tomorrow to go for a little bit of a sail. Yeah, let's do some exploration then. All right, well, there's no telling what the wind is like at this stage. Let's see, what are we getting? Ah, uh, it's not really going in the right direction. Not for that kind of exploration. Then again, we've been lucky in the past, haven't we? Uh, some of you have suggested putting another sail onto Gale, and I, I don't think that's a bad idea by any means. Having a look at this though, it doesn't look like we can actually put one at the front here. If I'm searching for sale, it will come up with nothing. And when that happens, it means that we can't actually put something on that on that spot. The same will go for here as well, I believe. Yeah, if we added another frame, it would be possible. But I think the thing to remember as well is that Gale is like a bicycle. It's, it's effectively a bicycle with a sail on it <laughs> and, and no pedals. And that's something that we might be able to make now, is, is pedals for, for Gale. But even then, you can't put foot pedals on that same spot. So, I think we're just going to see what we can do with old Gale here. Let's see. Start you up. And it looks like we are not going to be able to get any speed going that way whatsoever, even if we're angled. Okay, so what we are going to do for the time is just drag Gale along with us. That shouldn't be too difficult for us to do. Yeah. As the wind may change. And if it doesn't, well, it's going to make coming back home just that much easier. 
I think the only thing that I have to be very cautious of here is that um, we have a waning crescent moon. It is very dark out. Very, very dark out. We do have a torch with us though, so if we feel like we need to light things up, we can. Well, we have navigated past many a wasp hive and we've made it over towards this forest. Unfortunately, this time of night isn't the best time for us to be searching for stuff. But I think as long as we kind of just stick to the side here, I believe if we see a cave, it should still be identified. Or maybe not. You know, we can barely see anything right now. We might just miss it entirely. I'll carry it along for a little bit just to see whether or not I think it's possible. Otherwise, we might just have to wait until dawn. No, you know what? I feel like that's going to be more responsible for us. Um, that's what we're <laughs> that's what we're going to do. So let's just pull Gale over here. We'll jump on that seat for now. Have some of that nice, cold, crisp water. We could try and sleep. That's one way to pass the time. Oh, there we go. That looks like light. Okay, indeed it is. Aha, there we go. So we can see a lot further now. We can actually tell that there is a grove up there. All right. And the wind is still not in our favor. That's fine. We'll just pull Gale along for now. As more of the map is revealed to us, I'm intrigued as to what kind of grove that is. All right. That is going to be an oak grove. So we just make an alteration to this to say oak. That way we know exactly what it is in the future. All right. And we will continue on towards the north. I know that we could have gone to the south with the um, with the breeze, but the north is just so much more easier to navigate with this really nice big open field. The south is a bit of a mess. I mean, we only really know of the swamp, and that swamp is full of carnivores. Ah, it looks like we've actually kind of reached the top of this forest. Yeah. Okay, we'll just follow along the northern edge of it until we reach the river, as the river is a incredibly dangerous place in Innerwood, as we have discovered from our outings. Oh, a skeletal dog. Well, howdy. Okay. Well, I don't think it was close enough to really cause us trouble, but it's out here, which means that there are infected, and we've got lots of this stuff again, right? Yeah, not weed. It looks like it may contain some water. Okay, well, I'm intrigued about trying to just harvest this. Let's um, let go of you for the moment. We can't harvest it. Okay. Hmm. Well, we can't harvest it just as it is. I'll leave it alone for now then. Yeah, that skeletal dog is over to the east. Hasn't started chasing after us though. Might be going after other things in the area. I'm half tempted to, to kill it because it could spread trouble but also going into the woods is its own kind of trouble. So let's just stay out here for now in this nice autumn day sun. And we've discovered some shrubs. These shrubs are underbrush. Okay, useful if we do need underbrush in the future. I don't know how useful it's going to be now though. The reason I say that is because wild vegetables aren't a thing anymore. So yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> lots of things going on here. We've got grim howlers and we've got bees. Um... <laughs> and they're taking out that bee, or rather they're, they're trying to. That's not exactly what we're looking for. I'm not one to say no to sinew. Oh, look at that, and there's some peaches. Oh no, it's apple. Ah, that's an apple tree. Hello. Well, we'll take you, because that's free sugar. Yeah, Dermatix. They're, they're bad news. There's definitely a hive around here somewhere, and look at that. The alpha bee has taken them out, although the alpha bee is already quite injured. The Dermatic, not so much though, and I think the Dermatic might be, it's, it's about the same distance away. Hmm, we might be able to do something here. Let's um keep Gale close, because I really don't want those Grim Howlers to come back to life. Um, hmm, do we want to use the slugs? Do we want to make use of our slugs? I mean, it's already pretty injured. Alpha B. How fast are you going to be? Haha. <laughs> it's much slower than us. So let's just go in with the quarterstaff and we'll see how that goes. We'll let it take the step towards us because then we have a little bit of advantage. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, some good stunning action. Uh, and yep, we're bleeding. That's okay. It's knocked off balance. I think, honestly, best thing we can do right now is just keep on striking and try and take this thing down. It is getting in some hits, but nothing too bad. Okay, the Dermatech is still around. I would like to stop the bleeding before anything else though, so we'll just try and put some pressure on that wound. We don't need to use a bandage yet. You know what? Screw it. Let's use a bandage. We'll apply that to our torso. And it stopped the bleeding. Okay, and we've got a bandage on there to boot. Next up, grabbing that staff of ours, we are going to go and start to smash. Stop smashing. No. Two Dermatics. Oh, I don't like that. Let's just try and stay over here. You, you're going to come with us away from everything else. Yep, that's fine. And we're going to see if we can get away with butchering you. This is not going to be a pretty butcher. Um, we'll field dress first of all. Okay. And then we're going to do a quick butcher. Just to see what we can get out of you. And really, we are just here for the sinew. Of which there is much. Okay. <laughs> and too much, it might seem. So much refuse, so much mess. Really, I should look at uh, dissecting these. Because uh, it can teach us how to beat them. I do want to have a look at our inventory though. Unfortunately, we are just straight up overweight. We are carrying a lot. Our armor is very heavy. So I think what we are going to do here is put the sinew on a separate pile. And I'm just going to keep note that it is there. And so if and when we need that extra sinew, we know that we're going to be able to find it over here. And I guess it is this tile huh? Yep. Okay. The note has been left. Right. Uh, we should actually be able to ride in Gale now. Yeah. Let's um, pick up some speed if we can. Obviously, we're not going to get as much speed going down that way. Actually, we're still traveling south, so I think that's working out for us. Yep. Seems to be. Okay. So, um, what is that? A mound of dirt. Like a anthill? No, it's different, I think. Because the anthill's up here. Yeah. Mound of dirt. Oh, well, I'm going to have to investigate that now, aren't I? Yep. All right, fine. We're going towards it. Ah, oh, dear. For better or for worse. Now, okay, it, it is up from us a little bit. What I'm probably going to do... We're going to have to go into the woods here, I, I, I reckon. Notosaurus. Okay, let's just stop... We're just going to put that away for now, and we're going to start to drag. I just don't want those Dermatics to see us, because they will be a major pain in our ass. We do not want to tango with them, if we can avoid it, and right now we can. So, what is this mound of dirt? It is indeed a mound of dirt, and there are more Dermatics around it. Is it a hive of some kind? Mm-hmm. Wait, something... It's mixed with something to keep it stable. Its surface glistens slightly, and it smells like rotten milk. I don't like this. I do not like this. It's hostile, it can't see our current location. It is much faster than us. Indeed it is. Oh, and there's another one, just to our west. Okay, you can't see our current location. How can you not see our current location? They've got poor sight. The Dermatex have poor sight for whatever reason. Okay, tell you what, we are going to wield a blunderbuss right now, just in case their sight uh, returns to them. We can hear something inside of this place here. Is it buzzing? Labored breathing. Ah, oh, what the hell? Okay. Oh boy. There's another Dermatex there. Oh, now you can see me. Mm-hmm. If I run a little bit further, will you lose sight of me? Nope, you are just straight on me, huh? Okay. All right, we are going to try and steady up on this thing. It is taking its time to move closer. I want it to get closer. I want to get as good of a shot as we can get. And that's a good shot. 50 damage. Heavily bleeding. This thing's dead. That is straight up dead. We're going to reload right away. I know that we do have the other one. Dermatex spotted. 
Stop reloading, no. Okay, the other one is gonna be within range. Stop reloading, yes. Oh boy, that's very bad. So now I wanna know if we are able to pull this out in time. No, nope, we don't want to do that. Oh man, even just touching it did that. Okay, we can get a little bit of distance by running. We're going to drop this, and I'm going to activate the holster. It's going to take a second for it to pop out. Okay, that was good. That was good. We just need to take the shot. Oh, 71 damage! Hilma! Hot damn. Okay. Stop reloading. Dangerously close. Okay, that is the one that will be injured though, right? Nope. Nope, it isn't. Okay, that's bad. Uh, we need to drop our pack. Because that's going to be making us heavy. Leather backpack. Okay. Oh boy, it didn't get through our armor. We draw out the quarterstaff. Our torso is still quite encumbered. This thing is hard to hit. We got our melee skill up. They're both uninjured. You've got to be kidding me. But you know what? You know what? Our armor is holding. We are wearing the chitin of insects and it is holding. Okay, they got on the strike there. I'm amazed. I am actually amazed that it is holding as well as it is. We're just going to keep on striking here. I mean, hell, we might even... No, the reload takes way too long. That would be massively irresponsible. We are getting some strikes, though. We are also hmm, starting to get uh, rather tired. A few good criticals there. Okay, that really hurt it. We just need to do enough to scare it away. That'll do it. That will do it. They're scared. They're running. This, no doubt is some kind of dermatic hive. What we need to be very, very careful for with dermatics is that, uh, let's just say there is a horrific kind of life cycle to these creatures. We do not want to be a part of that life cycle. No siree. No, we do not. And this fight is not over. But that Legionnaires is going to continue in the next. So please do join me then. Well, Hilma, we came out here searching for a cave, and we found one. We certainly did, but it might not contain exactly what we were expecting. Nevertheless, we shall see, won't we? If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. We've got a welder. We have power. We have electricity. The world is our oyster. And I suppose we ought to do some shocking. Right, that's enough for today. I have been Rykon, you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon, who continue to make cataclysmic content like this possible.